Hey, it's Sonia here from Studio U. I'm the nutritionist here and I'm with Emma. Uh, Emma Sutherland is the clinic director here and owner and a naturopath extraordinaire. And we're here today to talk about Em's story, talk about her history with mental health and um, what's amazing about Emma and why she's my mentor is that she's been in clinic for over 20 years. Amazing, <laughs> really. <laughs> and I know how hard Emma works. It's just, what do you do to look after yourself so that you can look after all your patients, Em? Um, I think after being in practice for so many years, I have definitely learned how to use my energy in a way that fuels me. So as a naturopath, you know, or any clinician that works with people, mm. you know, you, you could be utterly drained because all day you're getting people coming in telling you their problems, um, wanting and seeking advice and information, which is amazing, but it can be really draining. Mm. So I've definitely learned how to harness my own energy and keep my own energy here and just listen and be present for my patients. So I, and not for a long time, I haven't been drained by being with patients. Yeah. I get drained by the other stuff, the back end stuff. But when I'm with patients, I'm actually more tired on a quiet clinic day than a really busy clinic day. Like I love my busy clinic days. Like you thrive in that. I do. That I love it. Yeah. And so what self-care strategies do you undertake? and to support yourself. Yeah, I think one of the things that I do love is sleep. <laughs> I used to be a night owl yeah. before my daughter was born, but my daughter is what I would call a lark. She is, you know, five o'clock, she was up from a very young age and she still gets up early. I couldn't deal with uh, that but at all. As a night owl, she yeah. trained me like military-like to get out of that night owl pattern and to go to bed at a half decent time and then be up at a reasonable early hour and I actually don't mind those early hours you know six on it's very peaceful in the world at that time yeah, of day it is so it's true. You know, i really love waking up having my cup of tea i'm totally addicted to my cups of tea um and and just sort of starting my day in that way is it herbal tea, Emma? That no. You're oh my God, no. It is like a very particular kind of English breakfast tea. Right. Yeah. And it's got to be that one. If it's not that one, I would be cranky <laughs> and nobody wants to see me cranky. So you've mentioned, so you've mentioned Sophia, your gorgeous girl. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of a background of your story around having Sophia yeah. and being a, a new mum. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Sophia is eight now. Um, and Sophia, the, the, Sophia came into my life in a kind of unusual way, I guess. I had dated her father for about three months and then accidentally fell pregnant. Um, and I was 37 at the time. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm not a little girl. Like I'm old enough to take responsibility for yeah. this pregnancy. And you know, I wanted a child. Um, I really wanted a child yeah. at early. You know, maybe from 35. Um, and I'd always said to myself, "Well, I'll do IVF by myself if that's yeah. where I kind of need to go." But yeah. then Sophia just happened, um, and then her father that that did not go. <laughs> go well that yeah. news um so i was pretty much solo mum from Danger. finding out that she was in you know in my belly yeah. um and then yeah she's been such a blessing but she's made me grow in ways that i would never have grown otherwise mm. like to to be a single mom and i went through family law court when she was tiny um and it was it was a brutal Anyone that's been through the family law court would know that that's a, a brutal experience emotionally, physically, financially, like in every way it's brutal. Um, but, you know, that that's the path that was, you know. That you had to go yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
And so I, I became incredibly depleted after having Sophia. And I love this whole movement now called postnatal depletion. So do I. Postnatal, you know, this fourth trimester kind of movement that we have now, which wasn't around then. Mm. And I completely bombed out. I really, I was a solo mom. I had a tiny baby who had incredibly shocking reflux, who had cow's milk protein allergies. She didn't sleep. And I was solo parenting. It was like 24-7, nonstop. And then I went back to work at three months. So not full time. Luckily in this industry, we can, you know, go half day yeah. a week or one day a week. Yeah. And it's so flexible for months. Um, but having to mentally get my hat back on for work and still on the back of no sleep and no nothing, like it was just brutal. Yeah. So I think that um, I definitely thought I had PND. Yeah. But I think it was postnatal anxiety, not Which postnatal I depression. Had. Like yes. I I really feel that I wasn't depressed. I was so overwhelmed and there were many times that I was just a mess on the floor going, What the f Have is this? <laughs> like what what is this existence? Yeah. I don't know this existence. I don't like it. Who am I? Yeah. What am I doing? I can't do this on my own. Um, but you can't stop, you can't press pause on life. You have to keep going. Like it was, it was so hard. I would never want to do that again, mm. ever. And so yeah. how have you managed, so how, how did you get out of that? What was the change that happened for you? Was it over, you know, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. There was also other stuff going on at the time. So the TV show that I filmed launched when I was pregnant with Sophia. Oh. There was a lot of media going on. There was a lot of demands on that front at the same time. And so there was a lot of like put on the brave face and stick on that mask and get out in the world and sell yourself, market yourself, turn up to a mm. press conference, mm. blah, blah, blah. So it was, it was like this dichotomous experience where then I would go home and just cry and be depleted and go, oh my God, I can't do this. So it was like this swinging from one to the other and the anxiety that came with that was just full on. It was so intense. Um, but as I mean, luckily as a naturopath, I could do the tests I needed to find out the information. So um, adrenal burnout was my big one, which I don't think is uncommon in women. Mm. Um, but I just- High achieving women too. Yeah. I, I um, yeah, I, I, it was just a matter of you have no choice but to do this. And in order to do this, you have to financially support yourself and the child. You have to Huge step pressure. up. You have, the pressure was enormous. Mm. Like I was just, it was under, yeah, it was an enormous pressure. But there's no going back. There's no put your child in a cupboard for three months where you catch <laughs> up. Like that's how I felt many days. Can I just put her in a cupboard so I can breathe yeah. and catch up? But yeah. there was not, like it was just, Go, go, go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that whole postnatal depletion was just brutal. And I think that really brought on a lot of anxiety. Yeah. For sure. Um, and I remember doing blood tests around that time. And, and you know, my testosterone was next to nothing. Like mm -hmm. everything had bottomed out. Everything had bottomed out. I got down to like 47 kilos, um, muscle wastage. Like it was yeah. just like that's like eight kilos less than what I am now yeah wow yeah and I was definitely eating <laughs> yeah you know I was always eating well yeah it was just that overdrive of the sympathetic nervous system yeah. was just non-stop and so um now you're very successful mm. energized you know you've turned it around completely yeah uh and there was, were there specific things that you did? So you did yeah. the testing, you saw where your hormones were at. Yeah, so I did a lot of testing. Um, I did a lot of herbal medicine. I have to say that's where my my real love of herbal medicine came from is, and to this day, I take adrenal herbs every single day. So do I. Um, <laughs> I, I took so many herbs uh, and, and nutrients as mm. well, um, but you know, that whole axis of the adrenals and how that works with gut health. And, you know, then I picked up all those parasites and I had mycoplasma and there was oh. just, 
thankfully I went and saw a really good integrated GP who did some really kind of like forensic like bloods on me um, and we picked up like five different infections and she said to me this is more like a chronic fatigue mm -hmm. than an adrenal and I'm like no it's not chronic I was like no I'm not gonna open that door mm -hmm. um, let's work on the gut side of things and then work on the adrenals at the same time um, and I that took years like that did not happen quickly um, that would have taken a good three years and also at the same time working through Sophia's issues she had the reflux the cow's milk allergy wow. then she had chronic constipation because she was on reflux meds until yes. and then she never slept and so it wasn't until she was about three and a half, four, that I felt that she was, we'd worked everything out with her. Yeah. And then I got to come up for air. And look after at that you point. more. Yeah. 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 So. It's really common, isn't it? It's so common. Mm. It is. Unfortunately, it is really common. Um, and I think. You put that little person first. It's your baby. Yeah. Always. But there is a point where you have to go, it's my turn now. I need to prioritize myself and yeah. look after myself. And, and one thing that I really recognize is that we don't have a tribe anymore. You no. know, like I truly believe that babies are meant to be born into a tribe where there's many hands on board, where mm. there's lots of wise women around to yeah. reassure moms, new moms. And we don't like have that. Facebook community. Yes, to get exactly. That. Like yeah. we don't have that tribe anymore and um i found it you know none of my friends had kids you know a lot Same. of my friends they didn't have kids um my family's in melbourne and in greece thankfully i've got one brother here who is you know amazing but at the same time it was such a solo experience like solo parenting is brutal but when you don't have much support, support around, around you, you yeah it's it's like you're looking in the mirror going who are you like it's <laughs> it's really Confronting. Confronting, yeah. yeah. And there's nothing like having a child that brings up your own stuff. You know, that, that having a child kind of bears your soul open on your own stuff. And so, you know, working out some of that along the way is, um, was, was like, oh, my God, really hard. So, yeah, I absolutely, I saw psychologists, um, going through the family court, I saw a psychologist through there, and then again when Sophia was about five, I saw a psychologist for a while then. Um, and I've always, you know, thought about the mental health side of things, that if I wasn't so proactive, I would have I would have slipped down that slope very deeply. Mm. I mean, I, I'd hate to think if, if I wasn't taking herbs, if I wasn't eating really well, where I would be. Yeah. You know, and the power of what we do is, is quite amazing. That's amazing. Thanks, Em, so much for sharing your story.